Good morning, folks. We're awaiting two CME impacts. First one coming tonight, second one tomorrow night. Both expected to be minor, but we've got top science news here, including Earth's rotation in the length of a day. We begin with our star, and the beginning of the sequence is the northern flare and CME, and after that, it's like the sun is magically transformed into a nearly sunspot maximum look. Top left. Those new active regions are going to be ripe for development today. We'll have eyes on them. The solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are very quiet this morning. Those CME impacts will be easily noticeable. We're heading over to satellite views of algae. Harmful blooms able to be mapped and identified much more rapidly with the new Landsat data products. It's more than just a high resolution camera, but beyond visible range to map the extent of the blooms below the surface as well. Up next is a nod to all the different names they use for nova-like events. This one, called a born-again planetary nebula, retains its central star to boom again someday, another recurrent nova, and it has an interior shell released at only 300 kilometers per second. People want to question a solar micronova. This nanonova is dense but moving slower than ambient solar wind. Every coronal hole in CME from our sun is faster than this. Folks, it's no less than the 20th nova event we've shown that is less powerful than our expectation of the solar micronova. Up next, a nod to that story from earlier in the month about increased polar mesospheric summer echoes. Here, it's noctilucent clouds and an unusual event in 2019. The German outbreak only lasted a month, but it was a high level season globally as well. Here, they once again blame a slightly colder upper atmosphere like that previous paper on mesospheric echoes. But once again, the mesosphere is at negative 90 degrees. All the water is ice already. The increased charge due to Earth's weakening magnetic field, allowing the ice to attach to the dust and each other, is a great explanation for this one too. Folks, our last update about a week ago on the length of day continued to show that our days are speeding up. We are now expected to be nearly 100 milliseconds fast on the year, the fastest on record with the most rapid rotation. And folks, after seeing very little outside the official data on this topic for years, a big story on the topic and how it relates to water and other geophysical characteristics is here. First, they're investigating the kinetic causes of length of day glitches, not the electromagnetic ones of solar storms and geomagnetic jerks. But it's still full of incredible nuggets, like how Earth once rotated at only eight hours, making for more than a thousand days in a year. It also describes how earthquakes reorganize the crust and speed up the rotation as well. They also say melting polar ice speeds up the earth like an ice skater spinning and pulling in her arms. Looks like they plan to blame the planet's record rotation on global warming. But it's their marks on deep action that caught my attention, especially water slipping down through the faults and cracks that can also speed up the planet. And that's where a modern catastrophist finds the blood echoes at subduction regions of more than just earthquake forecasting technique relevance. On the day when the great earthquake is felt across the world, I wonder how much reorganization takes place and how fast she'll speed up that day. Learn more about that day at suspiciousobservers.org. Lots of excellent playlists and videos to catch you up on a decade of research in just one day. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.